Hey, welcome to another episode of Film House. Um, we're back. Uh, our one of our best friends in the world is back. Adam from yourmoviesucks.org. Hello. Hey, I'm back. Thank you. You never. You're you're a time honored guest, just like Lawrence. Yes. Aww. Hey, thanks. I'm back too. <laughs> it's a it's a special <laughs> episode. Uh, first of all, this episode is sponsored by Lisa Mattress. You can save a hundred dollars on your first mattress, but you'll hear more about that later. You got a special. There's just so much going. Promo. Why is there an LED number on a digital display? And we got the Bud Watch check-in, but that's also a little different because John's on vacation. There's so but, much density packed into this image that I'm anyway, looking at right now. Um, so Adam and I went and saw a hit <laughs> Look, film whoa. called Geostorm. Yes. Uh, Lawrence hasn't had the honor yet. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, this is exactly my kind of movie. I, oh, look at him. He's so dapper. Oh, Wait, he didn't button his top button, did he? Motherfucker. I hate you'll get, you'll get a plot rundown. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> let's talk about you can see him spit a little Storm. Bit. His, his lips don't close a little I, I think, just to give you a, a quick background on movies we enjoy, Lawrence will often throw parties that have films made by those of like Neil Breen or mm. Tommy Wiseau or somehow worse. The classics, yeah. Yeah. The 1313 series on Netflix is a, is a hot ticket item, too. A Adam, what's your schlock history? Why do you like bad crap? Because uh, it's my job. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, oh, I'm sorry. trying to remember the first like really bad movie that I watched and enjoyed. Birdemic would be up there in terms mm. of having a history of, of just so bad that it's good movies. Mm. I actually wound up watching The Room pretty late. In my life, I don't remember. I think I watched Birdemic before I watched The Room. There, but. there is a. It's hard to describe the sort of magic that goes into something where they tried so hard and well, how's the, how's the rest of the Lincoln Nard. Park lyrics go? Got so far. Got in so far, end. and it didn't really matter oh. because in the, even in the matter. end. Sorry, I don't. It's been a while since I was an angry teenager. But so Geostorm, much like those other films, I feel like it's one. Of, it's beautiful because it's not Sharknado. It's not someone going out of their way to make a bad movie. It is, it's bad because they tried, <laughs> and I love that. So I don't know. Let's. Well, that's well. the cornerstone of a good movie. It has to be sincere. Mm -hmm. It has to be sincere, and it has to beg a lot of questions, most of which are being, "How did this get made?" Mm -hmm. uh, it, it it's fun. <laughs> it excites the theater of the mind because you know that there were multiple meetings where multiple people talked about this movie, and not and none of them did somebody say we should just not make this. It's it's in the same vein as like a Roland Emmerich film. Yes. Like day after tomorrow, and there's mm. a lot of things in this film that are so similar, but it just passes the threshold of ridiculous to the <laughs> point where it's just it's laughable. Like there's plenty of Roland Emmerich films that are just bad and boring. Like 2012 was pretty bad, but mm. this is resurgence. this is legitimately entertaining. I was in ironic kind of ways. I was telling Bruce a little bit about it. Um, and he was actually surprised it was not made by Roland Emmerich. Okay, for those nice. who don't know, that's the guy who did Independence Day and what Godzilla and I think you just call it disaster porn. Mm -hmm. You're not really there for the plot. You just want to watch a bunch of stuff blow up. And they do, do very successfully in America. Uh, I I hope not. Yeah, what's the Chinese take home on Geostorm? Pretty big, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It made its money back. They love seeing shit blow up. It's it's like the American cinematic audience circa 1998 is mm. what China is now. Well, um, so. Let, let's Batman. let's go ahead and just let's break this film down yeah. uh, to its core. So I'm gonna guess Roland Emmerich. There's a lot of there's like three maybe four human plot lines going on in the middle of this disaster. I'm guessing not bad. I'm guessing main character a scientist is trying to save his daughter. Daughter. Wow. Uh, she is a tough government agent who has cancer. I'm trying to think mm. of, the, of like mm. the tweak. Um, mm. I, I'm not wait, getting his, a lot. His daughter is well. Okay. Well. <laughs> oh wait, is that his estranged That's, wife? Um, I don't think she ever shows no, up. She don't worry about it. All right, no more. <laughs> well, I'll she's, give up. Yeah, she's watching TV in, uh, in one scene. She has no connection but, to anything? Um, well, she's trying to save we the should, president. I would, if, if you don't mind, I would love to, at, as we go into it, I would love to talk, do some like spoiler talk, if that's something we can do at all. I would Our be, audience hates oh, spoilers no. I would be okay Even spoiling. if we give like a warning and I say like, skip the, uh, I don't know. Go for it. Do your patented <laughs> I uh, skip I won't, to I won't do that yet, code. but there's so much about this film that's just so funny. That title other, card, though. Other than that, I mean, like, I'll do one on my channel when I have a video up for this anyway. Okay. So you can spoil it, man. I don't think um, it's gonna Or now we're just discussing it. Hmm. Well, I mean, there's there's so much that just doesn't make sense when you <laughs> try to think about it all in context. Well, real quick, we gotta give you, the, people are probably wondering, why is it even called Geostorm? What is a Geostorm, Adam? A Geostorm is when the Earth gets so many storms because the weather's so bad yeah. that the storms perpetuate each other, and it's like, oh no, now you're in a 
perma storm, like it's a geo storm. It's all over the earth. Mm -hmm. And so they gave us a little, a, a nice little rundown intro with a little girl's voice. I think it was his daughter's voice at the beginning talking mm -hmm. about how we knew the weather was getting bad, but we had no idea it would become a geo storm. Like, <laughs> like, so I guess a geo storm hit at one time. And so the world came together and built a thing called Dutch Boy, mm. much like the fabled story of the boy who put his finger in the dam or something. I think I'm trying to remember it was all called this. Dutch Boy. It's called Dutch Boy. <laughs> I totally <laughs> forgot the name. Parable. And so, from my understanding, it's also very complicated. I don't think it's ever spelled out correctly, but I, I think the world is covered quite literally in a net. Like there's a um, net, and yeah. and Dutch Boy, the ship like just kind of moves around it, and. It's, Anytime there's too much weather, they just kind of fire missiles at it. Is that and correct? And so it's honestly the way that it, it was shown visually, it was pretty much just it shot a bunch of little mini missiles, and then the Earth was fine, and there was never any more bad weather from that point on. Right. It's yeah. It it it's all all fixed so, thanks to this one scientist man who had the budget to. <laughs> shoot this rocket up into space and make this net without the permission of any government and the government's got mad at him for doing it well they they bring him in they they do the this is there's a weird point where the the main act the main character i forget his the character but um gerard butler is basically being accosted by you know government and government saying no scientist you can't be here anymore he's like i built it and they said no Go away, and he then goes off about how they're all being paid off, and they all they all have mistresses, and man, they're so bad. Anti-government. That's always a great message. It's Except, here's the kicker: his brother works for the government. No, and his brother is Jim Sturgis, and they both have different accents, despite <laughs> being brothers. But they're both played by British men, playing Ameri Americans that were born in. Britain, Iowa, oh. is what no. they said. They were. They go out of their way to explain that they were both born in the UK. <laughs> sounds like a good use of but time. But they're American to explain their horrific accents. And in the middle of this scene, as they're explaining it, it's it's due to a very borderline racist caricature of some British dude going, <laughs> "All right, just the last thing we needed, an American." <laughs> Does he have I like saw a... it on the telly. He yeah. literally says that. He literally mm -hmm. says telly. Mm -hmm. Is he wearing a bow tie? He's... Practically. Does he have it like was, buck teeth? I, I'm wondering if the British dude was played by an American. <laughs> like, <laughs> if they were just like, yeah, let's let's really mix things up. It's it was like someone had all the casting paperwork and they were walking down the oh. hallway and they hit somebody and dropped everything. Uh, I probably still good. It's so yeah, the, the Gerard Butler he, he he has a thick kind of Scottish accent and anytime he always kind of talks out of the side of his yeah, mouth. Yeah, he does. He's so a lot of it's like mouth. he's like, It's you're gonna get hit by your geo storm and you're like I heard some of it. Oh, man. I don't know. And then what an unfortunate word for him to have to say a lot. And Jim Spurges <laughs> uh, has like he's like a New Yorker. He's it's sort of like, it's an Englishman trying to do a, a, a like a very hardcore New York accent. So the whole time he's like it's like you know you're like oh brother you're like I gotta stop the geo storm like what? yeah why yeah and they're brothers but they're both from like Florida oh, they're brothers <laughs> yeah they're very scientific weird. brothers um, anyway sorry. wow brother against brother it's so, got everything sorry so we need to. Fast what forward it? on the plot. There are three kinds of conflict. There's nature versus man, fan versus man, and man versus self. And film versus audience. <laughs> <laughs> it's got everything. <laughs> Patience versus time. Uh, so, yeah, moving forward, I guess, we, I think we fast forward three years after they tell Whoa. Gerard Butler, you can't work on this anymore. And he goes, fine. And he, he quits. Three years later, I did it. Well, they saved the world from Geostorm. Well, the U.S. right now controls... Dutch boy, okay, and they're about to hand it over to like the UN, but something goes wrong. <gasps> Terrorists. We're in the middle of the desert, and there's a snowstorm, and everyone dies. Mm. Dutch boy is having problems. Oh no! Yeah, and so the conflict is brought out from them being like, "You're the only one who knows how to operate this. I don't know why we fired you. <laughs> they didn't train. <laughs> I literally don't understand why we will not let you have any connection to this project, but we need you back." Because apparently no one knows how to operate this thing. We've been doing it for three years. No mm. one knows what's wrong. It's uh. and then yeah, it, they, so he gets he goes back up to the the Dutch boy to check on all the geostorms, <laughs> and it is this kind of weird, like cast of stereotypes up there. Yeah, it's yeah. like oh, it, yeah, the it's flag like, on the arm. Yeah, it's like I like th there's like the snooty Frenchman, <laughs> the sort of like ecstatic like 
uh, Latin, Latino man, and then like the no nonsense German woman. I, oh, they have Chinese uh, casting though. Is that gentleman pops up every now and then? Chinese. Oh well, Sorry. there was a dude oh. in China. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there. I mean, you saw an Independence Day resurgence. <clears throat> you need some kind of token Chinese cast member now. Yeah, it's to show like all these different spots in the world where the geostorm is making things really weird, so like, they just Kong think of like, what's what's the climate like in a region of the planet? Let's do the opposite, mm -hmm. and that'll be what the geostorm's <laughs> doing. Like, a dude's in a desert on a camel, he looks back and there's a gigantic <laughs> tidal wave. It's just like, okay, yeah. all right, well, you're gonna show all these different environments. Wow, it's hot where it's supposed to be cold. It's mm -hmm. cold where it's supposed to be hot. Well, the the Chinese scientist, he's, he's a guy who, I guess, monitors geostorms for a living. Sure. That's like his job. And he's out shopping, and he's like, oh, it's hot today. And one of his eggs falls on the ground, and he notices it starts cooking. He's like, that's not right. <laughs> and so then he outruns the geostorm. I love well, when people outrun I, our, <laughs> nature phenomena. Yeah. So during during that scene, the basically the, the, the geostorm is making things so hot that the earth starts crumbling, like the streets, and all these pipes start exploding okay. out of the ground. Sure. And he's literally just running away from it in his smart car, mm -hmm. driving away from it. Yeah, and it was uh, charging. And and so, I don't... <laughs> that's not how heat works. <laughs> I mean, you'd be dead. The guy would be cooking alive. Like, he's, yeah. he's totally fine. If it's just hot like enough right to cook in, an egg, there wasn't like a, the air a wall is of you fire or anything. It was yeah. just the concentrated heat radiation. So wait, did, was there some know. overhead shot of the smart car and then like really bright light? Just no, like there was no in? bright light. It was just, it's yeah, just that's this. the scene. It's that's fire. Just, he's just it. driving through hot. It's, yeah. it's okay. like the, 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 the heat is so strong that it's causing like gas mains to break. Sure. And everyone behind him is dying and he's like in his tiny little smart car outrunning like diesel powered vehicles. Yeah. Um, it's also, not, buildings fall over in every scene. It's a lot of buildings just. <laughs> just <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like it was so hot that all the buildings well, fell the over. Steel beams melted. They, wow. Well, they do a similar the thing too. The buildings didn't melt though; they just fell. Well, you, <laughs> <laughs> it turns out they use the least heat resistant material in the base, oh, so the rest of it fell oh, over yes. in one chunk. That's how it works. Uh, That's the world of geostorms. Happens. Well, then there's another similar scene too later where we cut to like Brazil, and there's a giant wave of ice. Hitting everyone and you it like hard cut to like a couple and they're like no run away and they're running away from the the ocean of ice and only the woman gets away and it's just her running from like you see it in the trailer but there's like a an ice plane that falls on oh her. yeah 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 that's pretty, pretty much cool looking. And any sorry oh no and they're like I think up in the space station they're trying to stop the geostorm by shoving another satellite into another satellite but it's one of those things where it's like as soon as they do it boom it's fixed Pretty much uh, any any given geostorm scene somewhere on the planet will always get introduced with the bank gothic font in the lower left corner. <laughs> oh, and okay. then and then you see a crowd of people, just people that you've never seen before. But the p film will pick one person that you're supposed to care about. So okay. in, in Mumbai, it was a little boy and his dog mm -hmm. or something. And is there any dialogue, or is it just here's uh, a heartwarming oh, scene no. of a boy? God no. For, yeah, not for most of yeah, those. Yeah, they are parts, kind of violating the Roland Emmerich. Thing is that you have like multiple plot lines and each one of the one of the main stars of that plot line goes through a disaster And right. then you tell the story of how they're getting to safety or reconciling with their lost kid or whatever It literally just cuts to other part on the planet just to show how the geostorms screwing people up It's wow. um it, imagine that scene in the opening of Armageddon where the oh. media start hitting and the guys like whoa Whoa, whoa wacky all that stuff, but it's five or six more times cool and then what's the runtime of this movie? Hour and a it's half. an hour and a half. Okay. Yeah. Then. There's not a it lot of fun. actual movie in it then. I would watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, before this, you went and saw what was it, The Snowman? Yeah, that was boring. <laughs> yeah, that's like boring. Bad. This was. Boring. We were. We were having a good time. Yeah. Like this is giggling. Yeah. Material. Lots of giggling. <laughs> he was charging a smart car. He was at that little EV station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And it, well, so he's saying something there though. Well, so, he. So he's. Oh yeah. Got connections with the mm, government oh, and brother thing. That's right. And so he like alerted them and so everybody else apparently thought after the the initial uh china geostorm earth heating up thing everybody just thought oh those were just really old pipes that bursted and destroyed the like that's why all the buildings fell over where all these pipes are, are uh, underneath the the asphalt mm -hmm. and yeah. so it's not just like the human race though deep and, movie and then, yeah, the the guy in China was basically like, I don't think this was it. I was there. It's like, I don't understand how that got propagated in the first place. Like, oh. I don't understand well, why it, anybody believed. Well, now it gets opened up to a government conspiracy. Mm -hmm. 
Lawrence. Oh because, yeah, of course. Because there's got to be a human villain. It can't just be Geostorm. Well, the friend, the friend from China goes, "I need to, I need to come see you, Jim Sturges." Stur- Sturges? Stooges? I don't know. I, don't I know. would, I would like to confirm that this is the, the actual <laughs> name of the actor, because I literally just threw it out there. But I'm pretty sure that's his name. And it's the guy from across the universe, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's the guy's oh, name. Oh, the I guy in the car. Yeah. I, I think know. that's his actor's name. Let's I don't just call him. Universe. Don't, like don't worry Stooges about it. He's, he's like the actor that never has really made it. Oh, Which he's oh. actually like he can be good. But and now he's made it. Hasn't broken like a Gerard Butler, if you will. No, I mean Gerard Butler probably kind of did this like this movie half drunk and no one really noticed. Oh, yeah. It was probably just a payday. So I'm curious, since they have a multinational crew on the Dutch Boy, mm-hmm. why would it have been so hard for them to connect them with the people on the ground in various world cities to at least have some kind of human interest? I believe that? they've cut off. Communication or something, yeah, but they didn't have to. Like they, you're, you're making it up as you go. Just oh, yeah. make it so like the the Chinese dude's wife is on the space station and she's calling him like, oh my god, I can't believe is he okay? And then like the I don't know the African boy has a mom up uh, up in the space station there too. There was a there was I actually a spitballing ideas here. A, a huge like gigantic high resolution monitor that Gerard Butler and Jim Sturgis were using to communicate with each other mm-hmm. in real time. Mm. And then there's a point in the film as they're communicating with each other in live HD video from space <laughs> the one character needs to upload uh, Like a password or a, a shutdown code. He's like this will take 60 seconds in the same scene mm-hmm. It'll take 60 seconds you to upload just, like, it to write the, it on a piece yeah. of paper and it's hold like, it up <laughs> mean, <literally, laughs> Meanwhile uh, yeah. this it's encrypted uh, dog. Yeah, meanwhile this know. this 8k image <laughs> yeah. is coming in crystal clear and like the strangest aspect no ratio delay. ever. And they're like, yeah, the ones and the zeros take. It's gonna take a minute. And they're like, what? It. It, was, it was literally just to have an excuse so that the two brothers could have this like emotional oh. conversation. Like, yeah. okay, we need to we need to shoehorn this into the film. Otherwise, as soon as the code was uploaded, Gerard Butler would be like, okay, I gotta do this thing now. Mm-hmm. So it gave him a, a chance to stall oh, and I force see. in some really cheesy well, also, emotional dialogue. Also, hats off to him because that scene has one of the most complicated plot devices I think I've ever seen in a film where... Seems pretty simple so far. Well, no, Gerard Butler is having a talk with his brother and he just he tells some story about their dad and how they went fishing. And afterwards, his brother goes, didn't you hear? It was a code. They're like, oh yeah, they're like <laughs> this part. Oh. They're like, I'm 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 doing the movie disservice by like explaining this. Like, uh, well, so. he, he goes, our dad never took us fishing. Hold on, and he he comes up with some random code, some cipher, and he goes, re-edit the video of the broadcast he just sent and cut out like all, every other like every other Third word and then second word and then fifth word. And so then when you cut the video back together, Gerard Butler goes. Government conspiracy and he goes. Oh my god. Yeah, he was trying to tell me a secret message and I think we both looked at each other in the movie like what the fuck just happened. Yeah, that was a that was a highlight moment That was <laughs> definitely great. It it's just it was beyond words on on both the uh, ISS and on earth Is that the There scene? was a yeah, that was uh, well the I mean there were several scenes of that. Oh, okay, uh, but both locations had gigantic monitor gigantic screen saying just the countdown timer to when the geostorm's happening, like mm-hmm. thirty oh. minutes till geostorm. <laughs> so Throughout the, the whole film, it was so crazy. <laughs> so wait, geostorm. Okay, so these are not the geostorms. This no, is no, prelude no. to yeah, geostorm. Yeah, okay. So the the entire. But you're going. You're right. You're against the clock to stop the real to geostorm. They're trying to prevent okay. the geostorm. But even so, the geostorm right, machine, right. the Dutch boy. Dutch Boy has been malfunctioning, creating small storms that aren't technically geostorms. The geostorm is the the perpetual global storm. But I gotta I gotta ask one question mm-hmm. because at the beginning of the film they said that they created Dutch Boy because the Earth was already in a geostorm. So, so Dutch if, Boy can stop a geostorm. I, exactly. So what is this countdown for? If all, like, you've already stopped it, like oh no, the Earth is going to be in a geostorm again. You can just press a button. Like was, that's what you did. It was unclear whether it's to stop massive loss of life from uh, Geostorm, <laughs> even though people are dying like crazy already. Yeah, I mean uh, it's pretty bad regardless. It, it's just also need a working Dutch boy. Well, they made a machine too <laughs> that can cause Geostorms by shooting lasers, and it's just kind of unclear how that kind of works. At one point, it does just become a death laser, and it's just <laughs> shooting stuff. Oh, yeah. But other times. Like it creates a lightning storm I was in Florida. Ask about that. Speaking of death lasers, because I assume there would be a death laser at some point. Yeah. Is the climax of the film Gerard Butler fist fighting someone in front of a space laser? No, it's not. It's not that simple. He does get into a fist fight. 
on the space station. That does mm. happen. He confronts. Does he take one hit the, and crumple like a good scientist would? What? No. no well, no. He he's like the cool. He's like the Jesse James of scientists. He's so cool, <laughs> but not. <laughs> does he ride a motorcycle? He's a genius. He owns a leather jacket. Oh no no no! Oh, he's even cooler. In the beginning of the film, he's working on like a 1964 Mustang. Fuck yeah, he is. But he's putting mm. electric motors in it. Oh, nice. Mm. Because he's, he yeah. loves uh, the environment. He has classic sensibilities. Yeah, but he's yeah. smart. He loves the environment so much he created Jet Dutch Boy to stop the geostorms. Um, so <laughs> no joke. If you've ever actually seen a Neil Breen film, this sort of feels like if Neil Breen had a hundred and twenty million dollar budget. Oh man, I wonder. Because the, the, the ham, much. the, the ham fisted thing of. The government's bad oh, and yeah. hacking. Yeah, lots of hacking. Was there a Countless. part where Gerard Butler, like, gets handsy with a woman who very clearly wants no physical contact with him? Yeah. All right. Yeah, we're in Neil Brain Toward, territory. Towards then. the end, yeah, he he's borderline groping a woman. Ooh, that's romantic. And she's like the German no nonsense woman, and they pretty much go through like a life and death moment. And afterwards, he's like, "Get over here!" And like, you can see the uncomfortableness mm. in her face. But you know, it's like, who wouldn't want to? Cozy up next to Gerard Butler, and the way he talks out of the side mushy of his mouth. mouth. It's, mm. very, it's very mushy. It's like kissing Play-Doh. I don't. It. Yeah. Uh, those are things I noticed. But uh, anyway, yeah. So fast forward to the plot. Chinese friend uh, comes to the U.S. to meet with Jim Spurges, <laughs> and and there's a, a great moment where he goes, "All right, we'll meet you at a cafe." And but there's like government men listening in, and so. They're sitting at a cafe, uh, government <laughs> girlfriend and Jim Sturgis, just, and they go, friend, hey, come over here. And he goes, hey, he walks across the street. A man pushes him into the street. Oh, yeah. And a car just hits him. <laughs> and it is one of the funniest, like, yeah. on screen so, like, that, deaths. It's a meet Joe Black kind of uh, get hit by car moment. It was, it's, yeah, it's comical. It was like an assassination. Yeah. So, so, in order for the assassination to even work, the person standing behind him in the crowd at the crosswalk would have to know. That he's going to be there at the exact moment that the other guy is also driving. So oh, yeah. it was implied that the guy behind him that pushed him and the guy driving the car were both in on it, even though there was like a crowd of people, some traffic, and they had no way of influencing when the guy that they were targeting would show up. And I, it didn't show the car like parked somewhere and then just it it just happened to work out really all, well. They didn't explain the lore. That guy's actually tried multiple times to shove that dude into the Oh, yeah. I would hope so. They That's, did that at like three other crosswalks. Yeah. yeah. Every time he just takes <laughs> a step like, no, out. No, mm, what the hell? Not man? gonna work this time. Um, goes on to the yeah, cafe. Well then it moves on the from there. Over. So now it's <laughs> now it's Jim Sturges convincing his government girlfriend whose job is to protect the president. Yeah, he's her. like he's like, I need your password information. I need to be able to hack the the like the White House. And he goes sure. She goes, I can't do that. And he pretty much goes, please. She goes, okay. <laughs> that's that's the conflict. The dialogue's hard. It's it's all, she's like, I can lose my job for this. He goes, just this one time. So wait, there's no like, there's no Geostorm disconnected human plot line going on at any point in this movie, right? Because I'm getting that sense. Like, like yeah, it, no one's trying to meet their estranged wife. No one's reconciling with their kid. No one's. I, it's all just shoved into one. Okay. Much. <laughs> it, it's all uh, there. Like, it, it's, it's just from Earth when on Earth you get Jim Sturgis and then up in the ISS you get Gerard Butler and, and then, then randomly you get people in Brazil being bad weather. people getting killed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they, really. It's weird. I feel like structurally the template is pretty laid out. It's interesting that they, I guess they didn't feel it necessary. I'm I'm so confused when they when they introduced all those like caricature characters when he goes up to the ISS. Uh -huh. I thought that they'd all be used in some way. Like they had this whole introduction scene where it's like, this is me. This is how I act as a character. This is me. Like mm -hmm. one of those almost like introduction to like a, an ensemble cast yeah, films. Uh -huh. And then just none of them are used except for one guy, which was the, the, the really, really, uh, a British sounding dude that I was confused well, whether or not he was British. They do use the Frenchman briefly because I don't even remember. Well, because there there, well, because there was there was a murder. Not I a forgot one. about this. There's a murder in the beginning of uh, on the space station. Oh. Someone who somebody gets shoved into well, traffic, so, space traffic. He gets he gets basically There's like an jettisoned. Asteroid coming by. He gets jettisoned <laughs> into space, and oh. they're like, that was no accident. Uh -huh. um, but during that scene, you see the French guy kind of looking at him, kind of weird. And you're like, ooh, French must be a bad guy. Oh, they turn uh -huh. it on you. He's actually a good guy. Uh, but for some you. reason, everyone on this space station has a gun, which doesn't seem safe. <laughs> Gunpowder gun? No. Like, everyone's pulling guns on each other, and I think they even shoot a hole out a window at one point, which is not good for a space station when you're in a vacuum. It's 
Geostorm. It's, it's, it's good, bad. It's a genius film that you don't understand. Well, The true. movie is over your head. I Work. feel like there's probably a lot of relics in this film where they like they just had to cut pages at some point, so they had the ensemble cast. Maybe the writer oh, did maybe. have arcs in them. And then <laughs> uh, <laughs> that just fell fell off. <laughs> hey, Geostorm right. Director's Cut? Anyone? Uh, oh, please. Yeah, Extended it would be, edition. I would like to hear three hours so Geostorm. <laughs> Four and a half hours <laughs> uncut. The Lord of the Rings edition. Um, we're going to talk more about the ending Ooh. of the hot plot, but first we're going to take a quick break here from our sponsor, Lisa, Lisa Mattress. Hear that ad read. Hey guys, just want to remind you that this episode of Filmhouse is brought to you by Lisa Mattress. Whether you're upgrading your home, your health, or your state of mind, there's one surprising item that belongs in your shopping list. Yep. That's a mattress. With over 10,000 five-star reviews, the Lisa mattress is in a league of its own when it comes to combining quality, innovation, and making a difference. Why, you ask? Well, number one, it's 100% American-made, God bless, adapts to all body shape, sizes, and sleeping styles. It has a universal adaptive feel, that is a trademark, with three premium foam layers. The ordering process is very easy. You could avoid all that awkward showroom business by ordering online and having the mattress shipped to your door for free. Lisa has a 100 night trial, so you get to try that thing for over, you know, three months and decide whether it's the right fit for you. If for some reason, the mattress is not right for you. They will very easily arrange for your refund and a mattress pickup. Uh, also, one thing that we really like about Lisa is their charity initiative. For every 10 mattresses sold, one is donated to a nonprofit organization that serves homeless and or at risk adults and children. And for every one mattress sold, Lisa plants a tree because we need trees to breathe. And you can't breathe during a geostorm. You need, you need trees. You need oxygen, carbon. There's a whole process there. It's science. Learn into it. And also the price. The price is fantastic. I have to remind you that luxury does not come cheap. But when it comes to a good night's sleep, luxury is something you deserve. Lisa mattresses compare with brands that cost thousands more, but because they can cut out the unnecessary extra cost, Lisa's prices start at around $525, and you can get an extra $100 off if you go to www.lisa.com slash filmhouse. That's F-I-L-M-H-A-U-S, and enter the promo code FILMHOUSE. You'll get an extra $100 off. That's my promise to you. So do yourself a favor and sleep better with Lisa. And we're back. Oh, boy. I feel so rested. Did, oh you, did you guys have time to think about Geostorm? I had tons I'm still of confused time to why think there's about an, it. Oh, a fucking clock radio number on a giant LED display. Whatever, man. That might be my favorite. Maybe you know, because I looked at it for so long. It's funny because the fact that that countdown, countdown exists means that somebody programmed it <laughs> and, like, they just had it handy this whole time. Like, well, it, they, a giant wall clock. The movie definitely pulls another geostorm. We're there's like a giant flashy clock with audible countdown timers. Well, I feel yeah. Oh, that's my favorite thing. It's it's like the CSI sound library of anytime anyone types anything in the computer, and it goes so it's like, beeping and booping. Yeah. I would <laughs> hate my computer if every time I typed in a URL, I go beep 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 beep, make all these weird noises. There's a program that what did were, that. Um, what were those <laughs> really things annoying. called that they had that were like those collapsible holograms? There was like hollow stick or something. Oh yeah. Where they, at first we just saw a guy basically use it as a USB drive. It's like what? So USB drives are obsolete. You need to have this like shoo like big yeah, hologram like, thing. Oh and yeah. Then like, like throughout the film, they never use it for anything that I couldn't imagine a smartphone could do mm -hmm. like three years in the future or whatever. Like there's nothing about it that justified this de this flashy device. I think they that, were still using iPhones and stuff yeah, too. Yeah. It's literally on. He was on call with somebody saying, "I'll use your holocell to <laughs> give me a call here." Blah blah blah. It's like okay. Okay. A hollow well, I don't remember yeah. what it's. I don't know. Oh. The name is escaping me. I think you're right. Um. Anyway, so okay, so we got to fast forward oh. to the the hardcore plot. Um. It is now revealed that the government, the American government, is involved with the the uh, malfunctioning Dutch boy, and all these uh, horrific things happening around the world are because of the American government. What? what and is it goes the, all the way up to the president, Lawrence. Well, sure, but what is the substantiation <laughs> of this? Like America is trying to. Ooh. They want to control the weather machine so they control the, the earth. The, that gets the complicated. Modems are Just a little foggy. Yeah, because I'm like, <laughs> what? What would any state government possibly gain by enacting a nature-sponsored genocide? There, there is a there is a character, and I won't say who, but there is a character you who you learn. The <laughs> what? There's a character <laughs> who you learn is in on it, <gasps> and when asked why they would help create a, a geostorm, their answer is like, well. 
you would just have still have the good parts of the Earth left. Oh, it would okay. just be it would just kill half of the planet. As though they don't comprehend that destroying mm. the world's ecosystem. I think the kind of destroys the yeah. yeah like I, it's I, not just oh this one spot's going to be bad forever. Oh everything else I'll just keep my neighborhood safe. Like I, what? <laughs> I think the line was. What if we could set the clock back to 1945 when things were good? They're like what? <laughs> oh, they're like make America great again uh, over time. Kind of. I'm on. It's horrifically it, unclear. It does seem like foggy. It does uh. seem like there was a writer that thought they were being like really subversive. Mm -hmm. What if the American government just hated all other uh, people and they used technology to kill them all? Well, you know, it's like the political climate now. You know, you know, you know. Except at some point, somebody got really uncomfortable and like you got to back that way off. Mm -hmm. So they had to muddy up the line a bunch. To just try and get their point across, but then they didn't. And then the director on set was probably like, "It doesn't matter. Say whatever you want." And then, I don't know. I love I love imagining the dissonance between the the mental architect of Geostorm, the person who who created it all in their mind, and what we have now. And I feel like that's probably a big gap. I wonder if this was what they had envisioned when writing it. I wonder. I wonder if this is like a true version of their. Uh their ideas. The original screenplay. I, yeah. Maybe. Gerard Butler was the character's name. Well, so it, yeah, that's how locked in it my, was. My favorite part is probably the climax where, the, yeah, as you see in the trailer, they're like, oh my god, there's a conspiracy to kill everyone in government here in Florida at the Democrat or the Republican convention or whatever it is. The DNC. The, I think it's the DNC. Yeah. It's unclear. It doesn't really matter, but they're... It did it's a DNC very clear. Oh, they're, okay. <laughs> it's unclear. <laughs> I can't read good. Uh, but yes, there is a lightning storm Br a brewing mm. in Florida, mm. and they're like, "Oh no, the geostorm technology is going to kill all the government people. We got to get the president out of here." But the person who's behind a lot of this is also there, and he, he or she, seemed pretty content with just sort of being there. And then they're like, and then, "Well, then they're yelling at him. We got to get the president out." And he goes, "If you say so." Moments later, the whole place explodes. They're like. The bad guy would have just yeah. stayed if, if the good guys didn't get him out. He seemed like he did not have any in, intention to leave it, it, independently of, of things that happened <laughs> out of his control. Uh, and I guess also in this film, lightning blows things up a lot, yeah. especially concrete. Um, a, lot of, a lot of destroyed buildings. Well, the, I guess the funny thing, too, is so in every scene, you're either the person is running from the disaster or driving from the disaster. Lightning storm is actually the one thing that you're pretty safe from being in a car, yeah, because you're you're grounded by the rubber tires, mm -hmm. but they're they're it's hitting cars and just blowing them up. Mm -hmm. Like I don't I don't think they ever watched Bill Nye the Science Guy. Uh, mm. It was it was weird though, but then also it would hit like the overpass and it would like it'd be crumbling and falling. They're like, go under, we'll be safe. Or like yeah, but the movie's constantly contradicting itself, which is the best ever. It was it was exactly what I wanted it okay. to be. <laughs> I'm excessively excited for this. Then. Are you gonna go see it? Uh, Maybe not in no, maybe not in theater. I mean, Justice League is coming out, and in, and in terms of like wasting my life, uh, I feel like that's going to be a bigger, more horrific abortion of a film mm. than Geostorm. I, I could be wrong. Maybe it's right in the middle where it's like parts of it are good, which makes you pre which prevents you from really engaging that I hate how bad this is. Mm -hmm. What's the runtime on Justice League? Two hours. Anybody two know? hours. Okay. Even two hours. At least yeah. that's what I need to be said. It, it could be like we'll uh, we'll probably talk about Justice League next week. Uh, for now, I just can't save the world alone. I <laughs> that's what uh, Gerard Butler learned. But Wonder he Woman did it. The whole colorful crew of uh, international helpers on the space stage, Dutch boy. I wish. Ah, yeah. oh, man, a Geostorm Justice League crossover would oh, be probably water. the greatest film ever. I just wanted an excuse to bring our friend Adam back, so thank you for coming. Thank you. Oh, thank uh, you so much. Where can the fine folks check out your wonderful content? It's an uh, episode sponsored by Geostorm. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it is for me. Yeah. Uh, I didn't are, tell you. <laughs> so you, you actually you plan on doing a Geostorm video on your yes. channel? Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll have like a quickie review out in okay. a few days. If you uh, haven't seen Adam's channel, it is a delight. Uh, YourMovieSucks.org. Mm -hmm. It's one of the finest uh, I wouldn't call it a video essay channel, but you do some essays. Like I, yeah, it's a variety. It's of a variety. Different, I I can't stick to one thing. I like that you don't take yourself too seriously. Thank you. I appreciate that. So thanks for coming back. Uh, we're gonna do a real quick check in with the Bud Watch boys, who are currently on vacation. We'll roll to that, and with that, play it. Thanks, Adam. Hey guys, John Smith here. Uh, just to give you a quick update, I'm on vacation, as you can tell, as you can smell. Mm, smell that sweet vacation smell. Quick update, haven't gotten around to watch Air Buddies. Uh, we will be dissecting that next week. 
Uh, but I do just want to quick do a quick update on the ABCU, the Airbud Cinematic Universe. Turns out there is a company called Airbud Entertainment. They've been putting stuff out for a couple years. A few of the sh movies are on Netflix. Pup Star. Have you heard of Pup? Sorry, I got interrupted by that by that noise in the background there. Anyways. Uh, you should check it out. Pup Starts on Netflix. Follow the journey of a dog that just wants to sing. Um, Alright, well... Oh, what's that? Yeah, sure, ladies. Uh, anyways, I gotta get going. Um, but we will be back with the Funhouse Presents Bud House Best Buds Bud Watch Watch Bud House next week. Um, and we'll be starting a whole new series, the Air Buddies series, which actually takes place in an alternate timeline. So, uh... All right, thank you again once again, everyone, for watching and listening. Share with a friend. Thank you, Lisa Mattress, for sponsoring this episode. Thank you, Lawrence. And thank you, Ben, for coming by. Go thank buy. you. Bye. Right. We'll Go see you guys. Go buy some Geostorm insurance today. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. It's only uh, careful. Brave you yourself. Were warned. Be 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 wary of the Geostorm. They tried to warn us. <laughs> they did try. So this is from the article. Disney has also taken steps to unurban or unburden Anaheim since 1992. The company has paid the city for police service at its resort property and has done the same for fire and paramedic service since 2000. Those contracts now generate more than $10 million a year for the city. Mm -hmm. it's an, that doesn't sound like a hit piece to well, me. Well, it's unfortunate that you would think mm -hmm. that 